Very, very few people in anything that they do in life are just gonna accidentally be like, oh, I'm the best in the world at this. It takes years of hard work, motivation, and then just not settling for mediocrity, but continuing to work hard. For the bikes that I ride, I'm on a long seat recumbent, and so aerodynamics plays a really big part. That means position on the bike. It can be the clothes that we're wearing. It can be the components of the bike, wheels on your bike. And in a sport where I've tied in the time trial to a tenth of a second, um, all of those things definitely matter. Every single second counts. The attention to detail, being meticulous about all of your equipment can absolutely be the difference between winning and losing. In August of 2000, I had just come back from a deployment. I had a motorcycle accident. In my level of injury, I'm actually quadriplegic, so I injured my cervical spine. Rugby became kind of the natural thing that I fell into. The contact nature of the sport, the competitiveness, but also the ability to be able to vent frustration. And through rugby, I started doing some other sports, and hand cycling was one of those. When you get on the bike, you get into that rhythm, get into that zone. You can be next to the river or in the woods somewhere and you can meditate. It's definitely good for the body, good for the soul. Once race season starts, I'm away, and my wife, Amy, she's pretty much the head of the house and taking care of everything here on her own, so. It's as much a commitment, I think, with the family as it is for me. It's definitely a team effort. In any sport, having that fitness background is going to help. You know, in any sport, the one thing that you can control is your fitness and your preparation. In order to be a good bike racer, it's just the guy that's willing to torture himself and hurt the most. My goal is to qualify for Rio, and then once I'm there, ultimately do the best that I absolutely can. Not only to be on the podium, but I want to be on top.